Hey guys, welcome to this video lesson on polynomial long division and synthetic division of polynomials. Before we do long division of polynomials, you better remember how to do long division with integers, and you learned how to do this in elementary school. Taking a quick example, suppose I want to divide the number 414 by 3. Well, when we set up our long division, we would rewrite this as 3 on the outside and 414 on the inside of that division house. You would ask yourself, what is the first term, 4, divided by the outer term, 3? So 3 goes into 4 how many times? Once. Multiply. 1 times 3 is 3. Subtract. 4 minus 3 is 1. Bring down, and you have 11. This process continues. This is now the new number we ask ourselves about the division for, 11 divided by 3, aka how many times does 3 go into 11 without exceeding that number. So 3 goes into 11 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. Subtract. 11 minus 9 is 2. Bring down the last term. 3 goes into 24 how many times? The answer is 8. 8 times 3 is 24. And when I subtract here, I'm left with 0. I have a remainder of 0, which means that 3 goes into 414 an even number of times without a remainder. So I could actually rewrite the number 414 as factors of 3 times 138. So this can be rewritten in factored form as 3 times 138. Obviously, 138 can be broken down into even smaller factors, but these are two numbers that, as a product, make up 414, so there are factors. Now, let's see a division problem where we don't have a remainder of 0, but we are left over with something. So let's try dividing 416 by 3. In this case, we do this process all over again. 3 goes into 4 once, subtract, bring down. 3 goes into 11 3 times, multiply, subtract, bring down, and now I have 26. 3 goes into 26 8 times, 8 times 3 is 24, and now I'm left with this remainder of 2, which means that 3 is not a factor of 416, but I can write my answer. So I can write my answer as 138, and what do I have left over? I have 2 left over. So the 2 is still divided by 3. 3 does not go into 2, but we're going to rewrite this as a fraction. So this mixed number is your final answer. 416 divided by 3 is simply 138 and 2 thirds. That's how you would write your final answer. The remainder is now the numerator. And this denominator is what we were originally dividing by. This is the exact same process we use in polynomial long division. All right, so now let's see an example actually using polynomials. Let's suppose we want to divide x squared plus 4x minus 21 by the quantity x plus 7. We're going to set this up the exact same way we would set up long division of integers. We would put our denominator, x plus 7, on the outside, and that numerator, x squared plus 4x minus 21, on the inside of that division house. So now, here's the trick. We start with this first term, x, and we ask ourselves, what do we need to multiply by to get this first term, x squared? Well, x times what gives me x squared? The answer is x. So now when we work through our long division process, we're going to multiply by the entire quantity x plus 7. So x times x, x times 7. So we go ahead and write the next portion as x squared, and then 7 times x is 7x. But remember, in long division, we have to subtract that quantity. So we're going to subtract this quantity, x squared minus x squared is 0. 4x minus 7x is negative 3x. And then the next step in long division, bring down the next term. So now we're dividing all over again. Negative 3x minus 21 divided by x plus 7. We're going to take that first term, x, and ask ourselves again, what do I have to multiply by to get negative 3x? So remember, the trick is you're just looking at the first term in the quantity. So that would be x times negative 3. So negative 3 multiplied by the entire quantity, x plus 7, gives me negative 3x minus 21, and we subtract that quantity. Here we end up with 0. So we don't have a remainder, 
The answer to this division problem is simply x minus 3. So x minus 3 would be the answer to the problem. And since we didn't end up with a remainder, we could go ahead and write this numerator in factored form. So the numerator x squared plus 4x minus 21 can be rewritten as the factors x plus 7 times x minus 3. All right, let's do an example where we will end up with a remainder here and see what we do with it. Suppose we want to divide 2x squared plus 5x plus 15 by x minus 3. x times what will give us 2x squared? That's simply 2x. Multiply by the entire quantity. 2x times x minus 3 gives us 2x squared minus 6x. And now we subtract this entire quantity. 2x squared minus 2x squared is 0. 5x minus negative 6x is positive 11x. Bring down the last term and start over. x times what will give us 11x? That's simply 11. Multiply. 11 times the entire quantity is 11x minus 33. Subtract. 11x minus 11x is 0. 15 minus negative 33 gives us negative, oh, excuse me, gives us positive 48. So now we do have a remainder. We're not left with zero, we have a remainder. What do we do with it? Well, our final answer here is not just 2x plus 11. The answer is 2x plus 11 plus, think about this as writing your mixed number, plus what am I left with? 48 out of, what are we dividing by? x minus three. This would be how you would write your final answer there for that division. 2x plus 11 plus 48 over x minus 3. So we know that x minus 3 is not necessarily a nice clean factor of that numerator, but we can still perform the division, and that would be your final answer. All right, with this example, we have 3x to the fourth plus 8x squared minus 7x plus 4 divided by x minus 1. Notice here this fourth degree polynomial is missing a, an x term with the exponent of 3 between the x to the fourth and x squared. So actually as a placeholder, we do want to make sure we take into account this 0x cubed here when we're setting up our division. So when you set up the division, it should look like this, and you have this placeholder here, 0x cubed. So now I'm going to ask you to pause the video and try this one on your own, and I'll show you all my steps and all the work and what the final answer is in just a moment. Your final answer is 3x cubed plus 3x squared plus 11x plus 4 plus 8 over x minus 1. Alright, so now we're going to do synthetic division. This is doing polynomial long division with a shortcut. So we're synthetically going to divide to get the same answer. Let's use the exact same example that we just did. 3x to the fourth plus 8x squared minus 7x plus 4 all divided by x minus 1. When you're setting up synthetic division, it looks really, really, really similar to a regular long division, um, but the number that we use to divide by is going to be the zero of the factor in the denominator. So what's the zero of x minus one? We'll simply set x minus one equal to zero, and we get x equals one. So the number that we're actually gonna be using to divide is one, um, but we're not actually doing division. That's why it's called synthetic division. So we're going to set up 1 and then each of our corresponding coefficients. So I have 3, and then remember I have a placeholder for x cubed, and that one had a coefficient of 0. So my next coefficient would be 0, and we just go like this in descending order. The next coefficient that I have here is 8, and the next negative 7, and lastly positive 4. 
With this synthetic division, once you have it set up with all of your coefficients lined up and then your zero, you simply start by dropping down the first number, the leading coefficient. So I start with three and I multiply by the zero. So one times three is three. Then I add zero plus three is three. Then I multiply again. Three times one is three. And then I add eight plus three is 11. And then I multiply, one times 11 is 11. And then I add 11 minus seven is four. And then I multiply, one times four is four. And then I add four plus four is eight. The final number that you get is your remainder. How do you write your answer? You simply take the degree of the original polynomial that you were dividing by and you subtract by one and you replace each of these values with an x and then one less exponent from the original polynomial's degree. So instead of 3x to the fourth, I'm going to drop it down one and make this 3x cubed. Now that's my leading term. Plus, then my next will be 3x squared. Plus, my next term will be 11x. Plus 4. And then I have a remainder of 8. So go ahead and write my remainder out of x minus 1. And there you have it, the exact same answer that we arrived at before, but just in a much quicker fashion using synthetic division. All right, that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoy it. I'll see you next time.